Let's start at the very beginning where these little guys were born. I actually didn't take the eggs off of the leaves right away. I actually let them hatch outside. And the very next day that they hatched right away, we put them in a small container. They were so, so tiny and adorable. And I had to make sure that the container that they were in had really, really tiny holes for air to make sure that they can't escape because they were super, super small. So this is what the container looked like. It was actually my old microworm culture bonus container and I had a moist paper towel in the bottom and that helped keep the leaves from drying out. Eventually though, they got bigger. So I moved them up to a larger critter keeper just so I can not only see them better, but the critter keeper containers allow for a lot better ventilation and it's very important for caterpillars to get good ventilation. But I did have to wait till they were the appropriate size just so they don't squeeze out of the bars at the top and escape. But oh my gosh, here they are kind of munching on some leaves and I try to zoom in a little bit. I apologize for the bad quality, but it's kind of hard to film these guys up close while they're still quite small. But they ate a lot and right next to them, that's, that's a big poop because not only do they eat a lot, but they poop a lot. So when you decide to raise caterpillars, it is very important to make sure that you have a good supply of milkweed, whether it's your own milkweed that you've been growing yourself or the milkweed that you might have found in your local prairie. You can actually gather a couple of leaves, clean them off, put them in a little Ziploc baggie, and then keep them in the fridge with a little bit of moisture in there, like a moist paper towel so they don't dry up. I did have to clean these containers every single night. As you can see, they pooped a lot. And at the beginning, I kind of used leaves to move them around with Daniel. But once they get into a larger size, you can actually gently grab them and pick them up. You just have to wait till they're big enough so they don't um, get squished by accident. Here, um, they're kind of twitching and kind of having little arguments with each other. Caterpillars don't really like to touch each other. They don't like to be next to each other. So when you're raising some, do make sure that you don't have too many. I had seven, which actually is quite a big number, which is why I put them in a large container. And here they're kind of hanging out where I'm cleaning out their enclosure. So they're really close together and this guy's trying to escape because he's like, I don't want to hang out with these guys. Put me back in my container. I want to eat my leaves. So be careful in choosing how many. If you find a lot of eggs in the wild, that doesn't necessarily mean you should be hatching all of them because you have to be able to provide for these little guys. Another thing to keep in mind is that these guys are kind of a, a short-term commitment. You have to make sure that they have plenty of fresh leaves and you gotta clean their enclosure every night. So if you want to try raising some caterpillars, be sure to um, make sure you're not going anywhere, not leaving the house for like about a month. So this is their next uh, container. This is a larger uh, container that's meant for butterflies. I actually got it on Amazon and I will be linking it down below. The reason why I moved them from the Critter Keeper to that one is because once again, very good ventilation and flow, but it also it has a lot of space for them to later on attach themselves to when they do go into the chrysalis stage so at this stage right now where you're looking at them they're quite big they're quite chunky they're quite thick here is daniel's hand for comparison and they started eating a lot so be prepared these guys at the later stage are gonna eat a ton so i have to give them a lot of leaves and the reason why they eat so much is they consume and kind of store all this protein from the leaves and then later on when there are going to be butterflies they're actually going to be using that protein to produce eggs to reproduce the adult butterfly diet doesn't really sustain reproduction so it's kind of interesting how every part of the caterpillar's life has a very specific function another thing that's pretty cool oh my gosh he's pooping that's another thing if you look on the left he made a big big poop but besides eating and pooping which is what they do a lot. Uh, caterpillars actually go through different stages where they shed their entire skin and then grow and these specific stages are called instars. And right here we're seeing him kind of munch or her munch munch munch. You can see those little feelers that they use to kind of feel their environment around them. They have a couple set of legs that they use to hold leaves and those are kind of like their little sharp little grippy legs 
and then the back legs are used to hang on. So if they were in the wild and it was a really windy day, it's those back legs that are gonna keep them safe if there's a lot of wind, if the leaves or the branches are swaying around, that's gonna keep them in place. So here's another close up look. I was trying so, so hard to get as close to them as possible to show you this, this really cool inside look as they're munching on the leaves because they are eating so, so much. I do have the most footage from their last instar phases because at that time they were the biggest so it was actually the easiest to film them so you're gonna see the most of them in their chunky phase and look I actually got some footage of the incisors which is kind of cool uh, I'm, I'm really surprised how strong they are because milkweed leaves are actually quite thick and they're quite tough and the reason why they eat milkweed plants is because they want to ingest the poison that's in the milkweed so that they can be poisonous as well and look look at all the poop once again and then da 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 magic it's nice and clean every night i cleaned up their enclosure to try to make it as nice as possible and the next day look at that back again with all of the poop everywhere i mean they poop so much luckily the poop doesn't smell so i guess that's a bonus so this guy you can see in the back he's starting to wander around at the very end of their little journey as caterpillars, they will start to move around and do laps inside their container because they're starting to get ready to find the right place to um, kind of connect themselves with their little silk and jayhang. While the other ones are munching, yeah, this guy's in a quest. He's in a quest to find the right spot. In the wild, they would actually travel a couple feet away from their mother milkweed plant so that way they can find a nice and safe and secluded area so this guy is kind of walking around you can actually see all the different legs including their little back grabby grabby legs and you can see all their feelers and all their cool little body parts but they're gonna change into chrysalis very very soon oh my gosh how did this happen so fast what what um I don't even know what to say. I just saw them this morning, like 20 minutes ago or 30 minutes ago, and he was fine. And now he's a gourd cocoon. I mean, he's fine, obviously, still, but I don't know what's going to happen this fast. I wasn't ready. Uh... At this point, the transformation was insanely quick. I'm going to show you a time lapse I did. And what's going to happen is they're going to split their skin. And look at that. That's the pupa that is coming out that is so crazy now this happened within a couple minutes i sped it up quite quickly but i mean i don't know total this took like less than 10 minutes it was it was super super quick and i was not ready emotionally and then here you go look at them they're little chrysalis and they're starting to transform into butterflies and look how beautiful their chrysalis looks so here i removed some and i kind of moved them over here to space them out so they have more space to hatch whoa go closer they're starting to become transparent <gasps> i'm seeing the wings the outline of the wings oh my gosh <gasps> Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. We're gonna have some butterflies. Yes. We release them. Yes. It's gonna be great. Release them from the light. Here's a sneak peek at how they look. This one just hatched. Shine the light. Look at that. His wings. Are just starting to come out he's doing his little wiggles here once again i tried to set up uh, some footage where i just sped it up and you can see how their wings expand as they kind of dry after right after they hatch and they are pretty well attached to their little um chrysalis shell which is kind of a cool thing to observe but look at my babies the babies are hatching they're becoming beautiful, beautiful butterflies. And here they are kind of hanging out. You usually want to give them at least an hour to two hours to kind of rest, dry, and prepare for their journey into the outside. So they've had about two hours to kind of 
get ready, and they're starting to get very angsty, and they're moving around, so that's an indicator that we should release them. This guy hatched recently, so we might not release him yet, but these guys need to go. They're, they're moving around, they're flopping around, so I don't want to keep them waiting. I don't want to deprive them of their food and flowers, so we're going to take them to the pra prairie right by my house and release them right now. I think I'm gonna flip it. Well, no, I don't want to flip it because the other one's still attached. The, our little late bloomer. Yep, that one. Ta -da. He's starting to color, so he's just gonna come out later. That's fine. Oh, boo -boo, here it is. Look how beautiful. You're doing a great job. There it is. Oh! <gasps> Look at him! I'm trying not to cry. I don't know why I'm crying. You're just butterfly. I got another one. Another one. Oh, so it's flying away. Bye. It's flying back home. Try not to go. Oh, he flew out of his own. Okay, yeah, if you want to fly, you're free, you're free to go. Okay, put, put him on the plant. He's pretty flimsy. Oh. oh, yeah, he'll just attach here. He's not ready to fly yet, but he could just hang on. He'll just get comfortable in there and he'll just stay. Mm -hmm. I think that's the one that hatched the latest. So he'll just hang out there until he's ready okay. to go. Would you like to take one out here? So you just gotta very gently put your finger underneath their legs and they'll step on. Oh, that one might just come out on his own. Okay. Boop, boop. Oh, so beautiful. He's just, yeah, you just very gently put your finger under. I would like you to get experience. So yeah, there we go. There okay. you go. And just, just hold him. He'll, he'll leave when he's ready. Oh, there he goes. Bye. And then this one, we take him home. He's just gonna need some extra time and that's okay. my video I hope that you enjoyed it and maybe it inspired you to either try to raise some butterflies on your own or uh, to maybe go grow some native plants in your garden or balcony or even windowsill wherever you can every little bit makes a huge difference so I hope that this video inspires you if it does uh, you can also share it with your friends because I think if we spread the message maybe we can inspire more people it'll make me very happy it'll make butterflies happy and the world will be a better place and I hope you have a good day. I'm gonna go. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm doing a dance. The butterfly dance. Dance, dance. Do, 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 do. Bye. Thank you for watching.